Okay, I just started the cloud recording. Let me make sure I don't forget to start my backup recording. Uh, so I think many of you already know what this is backup of. If you're in my physics 4A or 4B, you've seen it. Uh, for those of you who are new, this is a backup of my face. It records my face. And uh, it also records the audio. That's in a slightly higher quality. So um, I was, so last semester I had something called original sound for musicians on. And I'm discovering that takes a bit of a bandwidth, um, like a significantly more than when you let Zoom do its uh, sound processing. So I'm just leaving the original sound for musicians off. I think that's uh, good enough for what you see in the Zoom recording. And uh, and so, you know, I use this, uh, uh, many of the recordings I do this semester in orientation session and in virtual class sessions, I'll be editing it for future public use for future semesters. And when I do that, it's nice to have a recording of my face just available. Sometimes I need it and Zoom doesn't consistently record it. And um, this will also serve as a higher fidelity audio recording. So that's my backup recording. Let me put my usual, what's going to become my usual welcome message in the chat and we'll get started. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining in this uh, virtual, not virtual class session, online orientation session. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask or put your question into the chat window. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, both those who are here in real time and those who may be joining by recording the video. Um, I don't have many real-time uh, participants. Uh, that's one of the reasons we are starting the recording relatively early. Um, usually for this online orientation session, depending on how many people we have here, we would have done some um, introduction, saying hi to each other before I start the recording. And um, for this part, I would uh, um, do my own intro. So uh, let me, I guess, do a kind of the... Um, Fuller intro, uh, although as I do the course demo, there will be a place where I can do more of the intro. But I'll just uh, say a couple things about myself. Hi, my name is Andrew Park. Uh, please call me Andrew. Uh, but if you feel uncomfortable on first name basis, Mr. Park is fine. One thing that is never correct is Dr. Park because I never finished my PhD program. I'm not a PhD. so. Um, so my name is Andrew Park. I'm your instructor. Uh, I it, so this is my favorite class to teach. It is the uh, really this is the class that has topics that excite us uh, physics majors and. Um, and it's the only class I get to cover modern physics in. I used to teach physics 10 for a while, but it's been a while since I've taught it. But, you know, it, as as many good things there are with the physics 4A and 4B, I don't really get to talk about modern physics there. So uh, in the, this is the class I get to do it, so I love it. Um, and, um, yeah, I, I guess compared to physics 4A and maybe even a little bit of 4B, I don't teach 4C quite as much. So, um, so I'm looking forward to doing more of the homework questions or recording this semester. So, um, so that's my quick intro and I'll do a little bit more uh, when I go through the course as a test student. For those of you who are in my physics 4A and 4B, you know, this should look very repetitive, <laughs> but I'm repeating it for the sake of, I think about half the class, I didn't recognize the names or um, new people, welcome. <laughs> we wouldn't have this class without the new people. <laughs> uh, so, um, so I'm doing it for the benefit of the new people. So uh, let me just uh, uh, repeat the beginning of semester notes. Um, so you saw this in the very first uh, announcement, which is linked from here. You can also find it if you go to the course homepage. Um, now the way the this top item is set up, it only shows the very the one most recent announcement. So it won't show our very first announcement because it's uh, already rolled off. But if you go to announcements, then you can see it here. Welcome to FedEx 4C, a couple important notes. And I guess in some sense, this is really, this was more important for my physics 10, the 100% online class. We do have our uh, once a week in-person lab. 
And that serves to mitigate a little bit when I see people falling behind in lecture. I see people not responding. But even so, because I, I think uh, there's a bit of a disconnect between um, with this 100% online lecture, um, how the class would have been in an in-person class, uh, it, I think it feels very different. So, you know, from your perspective, when you miss uh, one lab, you just miss the one class meeting. But from my perspective, often, unless you took a uh, conscientious effort to keep up with the lecture, you miss the week of class. So, so I do think this is uh, still applicable. Um, the keeping the lines of communication open is really important because when I see people falling behind, I'm going to try to reach out to you and, um, I want to be able to reach you. So um, I want to first make sure that people are checking their Peralta email regularly. Um, and what that means is, uh, so if we are using Peralta email as your main email, that's great. There's nothing more you need to do. Now, if we, somehow you are not, then um, I, my recommendation is forward your Peralta email. So um, there are some instructions here. Let me just uh, quickly demonstrate. I hope I don't have anything sensitive in my Peralta thing. Uh, so the way to go there is portal.peralta.edu. And you, I've logged in before, so it's just getting me directly here. But if you haven't logged in, then it'll work you through the login screen and find the Outlook app somewhere here, um, there. <laughs> I think it's alphabetized the list. And then um, from the gear icon, you can see it's warning me that I forward the stuff. <laughs> Search settings for forwarding. Um, then uh, this is what I recommend. Um, you can keep a copy. Um, um, the main email that you use, this is my main email, and I have it forwarded. That way I check, I mean, I do check my Peralta email from time to time, but not quite as often as I check my main email. And um, I want people to be reachable on a reasonably um, timely basis, um, like within 24 hours uh, via email. So please do that. Now, email is my first backup method for communicating with you for course-related matters. My uh, uh, preferred method of communicating with you is through Canvas. It's a kind of matter of organization of communication because I use email for other things too, and I'm pretty sure you use your emails for other things. And sometimes you want to have course-related stuff collected in one place so that it's easy to find. And that tool for me is Canvas, uh, the Canvas uh, conversations tool or Canvas inbox, this icon here. And when I use this to reach out to you, um, I want to make sure that you receive those messages like email. And the way to make sure that you can do that is by setting your notification setting. You can use this link or you can go to your profile picture and then notifications. I'm middle clicking so it opens a separate tab. Uh, I middle click in my mouse. <laughs> so uh, you can set per account, per course settings. Per course settings are too uh, cumbersome for me, so I'm, I'm setting per account setting. And my um, kind of default recommendation is set everything as notify immediately. Because if something starts to bother you, you can turn things down. Uh, you see that I've done that with like submissions. It used to be notified immediately, and then I realized, oh, I'm gonna get received notification for every single submission, <laughs> and that was too much. So daily summary for that, and the grading policies or do they, they, like these only affect when I change them. So daily summary for those. Everything else is notified immediately. Now I realize, so you know, I'm teaching just this class and actually one other class, so I'm not dealing with many different classes. I realize you may be dealing with more classes, so you might not want to do what I'm doing. But I would really recommend that you set three plus one setting as uh, as uh, notify immediately, so that um, the ways I used to uh, communicate with you for this class that you get those notifications immediately without any unnecessary delay. 
And the, uh, the one that I was talking about, the Canvas conversations or messaging tool, it's uh, uh, here. And what, you, what I would ask you to uh, set as notify immediately is the conversation message setting. So when I send you a new message, um, I would like you to receive notification of that immediately. And the way to do that is to set this as notify immediately. And um, the other thing is the, the other two things that I would ask you to set as notify immediately are the course announcements. You've seen me uh, post two announcements so far. And I think the way I timed the last evening's announcement, even if you had a, turned it down to daily summary, you should have gotten a notification. Now, the thing is, uh, sometimes I post announcements at like 7, 8 p.m. And uh, if you have a set it as daily summary, there will be up to like 24 hour delay before you can receive the notification. And I usually try not to put anything in the announcement where you have to no, um, react with a less than 24 hour notice. But still, uh, why introduce unnecessary delay? You can set it as notify immediately. Uh, so announcement is one and the one last one and this uh, took me a while to realize it was a potential issue sometimes. So when I grade your work, you know, conceptual questions, um, the, the lecture reflection discussion, the kind of the things that gets manually graded, the ones that are on canvas, uh, sometimes I'll have comments and sometimes the comment that I leave, um, it, it, it pertains to me wanting you to do something and uh, your how your next submission will be graded. Kind of depends on if you change it, correct it, that stuff I was pointing out. And I was uh, finding that not everyone was receiving those. And I like to leave those grading notes as a submission comment that's associated with the assignment. Again, it's a kind of um, matter of organizing our communication so that they can be found and uh, noticed uh, later more easily. And I was finding that not everyone receives those comments um, either immediately or ever. So I really want you to have some sort of notification turned on. What I recommend is notify immediately. If you have too much to deal with, with a peer review and um, your other classes, if you want to turn it down to daily summary or weekly, probably not weekly summary, but if you need to turn it down, sure you can. But I really strongly recommend against the turning it off because that could mean that you don't see um, grading notes that I assume you have seen and read uh, when I grade your next uh, uh, submitted uh, uh, assignment. So those are the three things that I recommend that you set your notification as notify immediately. And there's one more thing I would ask you to set some sort of notification. That is under discussions, new topic. There's a couple reasons for that. One, um, recording like this, like this session, uh, I am going to be posting these recordings under discussions. I found that that's the place to organize it better than cluttering up the announcements. So uh, when I post these recordings, if you want to receive notification of the new recording immediately, this is what you need to turn on as notify immediately. That's one reason. Second reason is the discussions in this course, it's uh, set up in a way where anyone can post. So when I go to discussions, and, and you know, as an instructor, of course, I can post a new discussion. And even in the student view, where I don't have the, all the instructor access, I can still post a discussion. And, um, and uh, so I want you to be able to use this as a tool to communicate with your students knowing that I also see it. <laughs> and the only way it'll work is, is if uh, everyone or as many people as possible have the discussion notification for new topic turned on. So, um, so that's my ask of you that uh, please turn on um, discussion notification setting for new topic. Uh, if you have other classes where your instructor forces people to reply to everything, um, that, you know, that's controlled by new reply and that you can do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> it's a new topic notification that I'm asking to set notify immediately. So those are the couple important notes for the um, for how communication in this class works. I'd uh, like you to make sure that you are receiving your Peralta email 
um, in a timely manner, whether either you are using it as your main email or forwarding it, and that you have proper course notification settings set up for uh, this course's Canvas shell. So um, I think, uh, yeah, so that's everything for that item. And um, let me, so, so whenever I do these online sessions, whether it's orientation session or virtual class session, uh, I'm going to be posting a message of this form. And one of the reasons for it is it's my way of um, kind of keeping track of what I'm going to cover and making sure that I don't <laughs> forget anything important. So let me flip the order a little bit and cover this and this first. One is the scheduling of virtual class sessions and office hours. So I do have office hours for Thursday morning set already. Thursday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, I have office in-person office hour for my Physics 4A class. And, um, um, and so we have that. Um, but I would love to schedule additional hours. Uh, for this class, I have to schedule another virtual class session. That's uh, usually the session where I work on homework problems. Or if there's any lecture that I feel I'm missing, then I can do a desktop lecture. And um, this semester, I think uh, I'm going to schedule virtual class sessions in the blocks of maybe hour and a half because we have a shortened 14 week session and I don't, as I mentioned, I don't teach physics forces as often as I would like to. So I'm anticipating there may be some things that I would have liked to have done in the past that I haven't done. So I'd like to add uh, 30 minutes of additional time so that I can be sure there's enough time. So uh, for that, my goal is to schedule them in the time when more most number of people can make it. So I'd like to get your input. So uh, I just, uh, uh, spend some time this morning making sure that this quiz is uh, or survey is updated. So let me uh, publish this now. And when I publish it, it will be a little bit difficult to, to find the link to this. There's one place where you can find the link already, but um, that's a link that I don't want you to use. So <laughs> I won't ask you to use it. it I don't want to send a mixed message. Um, but uh, let me after this session ends, when I post the recording, uh, let me post the link to this survey so that I can get some sense of, uh, so that you can respond to it and that'll help me figure out when I should schedule either virtual class session or the, the uh, in-person office hour. So, um, so these are the kind of, um, yeah, maybe I should get rid of this question at some point because <laughs> I think we are fully back. Um, anyways, so so that's uh, one. Um, yeah, and uh, if we had more people here in person, we I would have asked, or if I remembered, I would have asked before I started the recording. But um, yeah, it's, so um, um, yeah, and the um, the the. Uh, Fourth item in this agenda, and the final before I start the course demo is reminder of Wednesday's in-person lab session. So we have in-person lab section. It's uh, attendance in it is required to, to stay in class. Now, if you somehow can't make the first lab session, just make sure that I know about it. Um, I so I do take attendance at the first and the second lab session, and whoever's not there, I'll be reaching out to ask, hey. Uh, do I need to drop you? <laughs> um, you know, if you let me know that you won't be there and why, uh, it can save that bit of communication. So, um, so about the Wednesday. So, uh, for people who have been in our physics 4A and 4B, you know where we are. Great. If you haven't been in our physics 4A and 4B, then uh, I will. I have a have this language in a bunch of places, and I'll also post a reminder this evening. So I think in syllabus, I talk about the lab sessions, uh, when we meet, where we meet. We are in Atlan 100, room 100, and that's in Peralta Science Annex. We are not at the main campus. This is our street address, A60 Atlantic Avenue. It's in the middle of an office park in Al Alameda. It's a great place. Um, and uh, plenty of parking. <laughs> and I think there's also one other page in modules, you know, you as you work through the uh, orientation and getting started the modules. Um, where did I put the notes on the in-person lab session? Um, guess not here. 
I might have put the in-person lab session here, weekly lab modules, or here. <laughs> Let me just check those two and then move on. Okay, not here. Um, okay, maybe here. Lab, yeah, this is the time, and uh, this is our street address. And I'll, I'll uh, again, send a reminder tonight. Um, so please plan on being there. So we do have some activity that uh, we'll do if you're in physics 4A and 4B. It's the same activity you've done, but, you know, it's your chance to reconnect with the people you've met before or, you know, meet new people. Um, I, I do recommend meeting with the new people, you know, to just for variety. Um, so, so this lab module, which you will unlock after finishing the getting started module, it'll uh, describe what we do in weeks one and two. And uh, week one, um, we meet in Allah 100. And one of the activities that you will do is uh, this uh, setting your own goals activity. Um, it's, uh, and I think uh, I, did I put a note here? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I put a note on optional one-on-one -on -one meeting. So last semester, I didn't do anything with this. I mean, I did read through most of it, but, uh, like, uh, you know, it was you just writing it down for your own sake. And what I want to try out this semester is when you look at physics of 4C grading standards, um, you'll find that um, I decided everything. <laughs> I decided what are the descriptions for the standards for physics for A, for B, oh, uh, well, um, these. And the detailed standards are in the syllabus. Uh, so I decided that those, like, you didn't actually get to um, have any agency in some sense. Um, um, so what I would be willing to do is for those of you who complete optional, optional, this one is optional, optional one-on-one -on -one meeting, um, I can, I, I, we can talk through your goals, uh, see how substantial they are, and uh, after we've had a chance to talk, come to some agreement on what your goals ought to be, I'm willing to uh, factor in your goals in how you are graded. So um, in the past semester, the main factor in grading was, you know, can you solve physics problems? And that'll almost always, that'll always be a part of it. But, um, you know, last semester, I wasn't really talking about what your goals were. Uh, for those of you who complete this optional one-on-one -on -one meeting, uh, I'm happy to put uh, more emphasis on uh, what you set, what you set as your goals and your uh, progress toward attaining that. So, um, so yeah, that's there. Um, and yeah, so so that's the activity for Wednesday's lab session. So uh, please plan on being there again. Uh, if you can't make it for some reason, let me know why and make sure you can be there on the second week. Uh, I will be reaching out to people who uh, are not there in the first week and people I don't hear back from. I will be dropping them. So, so with that, uh, I want to spend the remain, remaining time here just going through the course, uh, maybe demonstrating some of the... Uh, some of the um, items that are new-ish in this uh, physics 4C. And uh, yeah, so let me go into student view and just uh, work through the co course modules. Um, I've deliberately not done anything as test student so that I can demonstrate here. Um, at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, so, so this is like the view you would see if you access our course uh, Canvas homepage uh, on a web browser. By the way, uh, I don't really recommend that you use the Canvas mobile app. I recognize I can't stop you from using it. Uh, if something in the course doesn't appear to work on the mobile app, try the web browser. Mobile app has been buggy. Some things hasn't, haven't worked. I think now it's showing this homepage, but I have issues with it. Um, so the, the I, I don't really use the mobile app. Um, I use the web browser. So uh, what the way things appear in the web browser is what I take a look at, what I make sure uh, looks okay to me and hopefully to you as well. And speaking of things that I see and don't see, this uh, to-do sidebar is something that if I could disable for this class, I would. I can't, so that's why that's there. 
Uh, if you somehow you want to use it, it's useful to you. All right, I can't disable it, so it's there. But I, I recommend not paying too much attention to it because um, the biggest reason for it is I don't see the same to-do bar that you do. The to-do items that I see is uh, to-do for instructor, like grade this, grade that. So, so I um, don't know. I don't often think about what's in your to-do bar. So whatever is in your to-do, you kind of have to imagine that I wasn't thinking about it. So um, I do think uh, it might be useful for tracking what announcements you've seen. But that's basically it. Like, I think that's the one thing that that to-do bar is good for. The other things that some people might have thought of using, I think it just ca causes more confusion than uh, anything else. So, for example, uh, so you might think, looking at this home page, oh, there's to do great discussion, introduce yourself. Let me introduce myself. And when you go there, this is what you see. So... <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what's this? <laughs> um, I think it's a little bit better now Now that I've turned on this option before people to see other people's reply and get super confused. Like, what can I do here? I can't do anything here. Now, if you slow yourself down and read, um, then you can see why you can't do anything here because there are these module requirements that need to be completed. Uh, sometimes people will reach out to me and ask, uh, hey, professor, can you please unlock this for me? And, my cons consistent reply is um, when it says, you know, this is part of some module, hasn't been unlocked yet, they didn't finish their sentence, it hasn't been unlocked yet by you. I didn't lock anything. The only locking I do in this class, other than one tiny exception, is I uh, lock things by Canvas module requirements. And those module requirements are something you can clear for yourself. So, um, so, so that's how, and those module requirements are designed to be viewed through the modules view. And that's how I recommend that you look at through the course. And this uh, to-do bar, it makes people think that they can skip around just to do the assignments. And sorry, the course isn't set up that way. So even though you have the link to the assignments, most of the time, you can't do anything. You have to go to modules view and work your way that way. That's why even though there's the link to the virtual class session here, I'm not going to be telling you to use it because I don't want to send the mixed messages. I'm going to post that link for you in an announcement so that you will see that in the announcement. And that's my instruction for you to follow it. So other, instead of using the to-do bar, what I recommend is when you're on the home page, hey, read it through the home page. Welcome to Physics 4C. Blah, blah, blah. Actually read it. And it says, you know, click on start here button to get started. So click on start here. Now it'll take you always to this page. It's the very first module page. So the very first time you are here, it's great. You know, read through it and you can, you know, click through. <laughs> yeah, module requirement. This is what I was talking about. Click next, um, read it through, click next. Now you can kind of see that I'm probably doing the thing that I wouldn't want you to do. And if you're guessing that, you're right, keep guessing right. Because uh, I do want you to actually read it. Right now I'm just clicking through because um, I'm, I, I like to joke, a test student is my worst student. He never does any work. He, um, yeah, he never does any work. He just does timed assessment and somehow he does well. Um, so I'm simulating test student who's a terrible student who never does anything he doesn't have to. <laughs> so uh, now um, just clicking next to through, at some point you get blocked. Uh, like you start saying, oh, this isn't what it, it lo doesn't look like I can do anything here. So um, now if a test student were to slow down and read, he would realize, oh, okay, other could a place that I just clicked to through, I actually have to do it and score at least a 1.9. Okay, um, so I guess I'll go do that. But before doing that, let me just go back to the home page. And um, so this way of working through the class, the very first time it works great. Um, you know, start here. Second time and third time, it's going to get annoying super soon if you have to come here every single time and click through next uh, like dozens of pages. So I don't recommend that. What I do recommend is that you access this course through the modules view. You can either use this link here, or you can use the sidebar link. They both go to the same place. 
when you go to modules, it does a few things. Um, one, it keeps it keeps track of what you have done. Um, so you know this orientation module. I have completed everything, and I can see these check marks. And I can say, oh yeah, this had the module requirement of view. I've viewed the page, which I, means my web browser has loaded the page. Yeah, that's done. Now, um, if you didn't actually read it, please go back and read it. Um, and in the getting started module, I can see, okay, these view requirements, I fulfill them. And now the requirement that I didn't fulfill is the owner code pledge. I viewed the page, but that's not the requirement for this. Requirement is score something. So I need to actually do it and score. And that's one thing that uh, modules view does for you. It keeps track of what you've done. And two, it shows you what's coming ahead and what the requirements would be. So it shows you, okay, there's a graded discussion coming that you do tonight. Uh, I need to contribute. And um, once I do that, so this was the getting started module. Having finished that, we'll have unlocked this week one module. And this week one module will start out with these pages. There's something that I need to mark as done, somewhere I need to contribute, <laughs> something I need to submit and on. So these grayed out links, even though I can't go there right now, I can see what's coming ahead. And you know, the course is organized. There are multiple assignments due on the same day. You don't really want to be finishing this at midnight. Because then you have this, you have this, you have this. So midnight on February 19th, I mean. So you want to make sure you plan out enough time, do this early enough so that you are not stressed out when you are finishing this. And modules of you allows you to look ahead and kind of plan out uh, what things are due on February 19th and plan to do them on time. So... So modules view is the way I recommend that you see it. And the one of the major reasons for that is um, that, that I, it's the same view that I see. When I kind of organize course content, uh, you know, as an instructor, the modules view I see, it's substantially the same as the view that you see. You know, I just don't have the check marks of what I've done. I have, the, mar I have the marks of what's been published. So, um, so when I think about the things that you see, Modules view is uh, what I see, what I don't have to think twice about, what you have access to. So let me go to Honor Code Pledge and do it properly. Uh, I graded uh, everyone who's done the Honor Code Pledge uh, by this morning. I graded uh, some a batch this morning, and I'll finish grading uh, tomorrow when everyone has submitted on time, hopefully. Um, and I get um, uh, every semester except for physics 4a this semester which was like a surprise to me i get people who do this wrong um so the i guess the most common way people do this wrong is um they um just type their name so as i say here you know the purpose of the quiz is making sure that they've read the online course on their code and as you see me just click through I, so far i haven't done anything that requires actually reading through the honor code and, you know, if I'm requiring you to just to type your name here, I still don't know if you've read it. So that's not the requirement. But the requirement actually is to type this out. And um, now this is the part where I've had uh, students every semester, at least one. Again, we did the exception of physics 4A this semester, which surprised me. Um, I, I get people who don't read the instruction. Instruction says, please make sure that you are typing the text, not copy and paste. And I'll have people do this, you know, copy and paste and change their name. And, you know, they might be thinking, how, how is Andrew going to know? You know, I'm telling you to type the exact text. How am I going to know if, uh, you know, this was typed or copied and pasted? What I would say is, well, if I didn't have a way to know, I wouldn't be making this a requirement. Anything that I require, I've thought through a way to enforce it. So I'm not quite willing to show how I'm going to enforce that on recording, because eventually I'll be posting this to YouTube, public, you know, <laughs> consumption. Um, 
I will demonstrate to you how I detect it uh, in the lab session. Uh, those of you who are in my FITX 4A and 4BA, you've seen it. I've already done that. None of this is a big surprise or secret. Um, but for those of you who are new, let me show you. Uh, and I think and I think that demonstration is useful to serve as this purpose, which is a uh, uh, ton of stuff get recorded online. So. <laughs> So, so you know, the moment you ignore instructions to things that might be deemed academic dishonesty, you're pitting your knowledge against my knowledge. And how much do you think you know that I don't know? So let me do this properly so that when I have people who are not doing this properly, I can send them this recording and tell them, hey, this is how you do it. Please do it. So I'm just going to type it. I'm going to do this as test to student. So let me type out I... Test the student will. And I'm just going to type out this indented block of text. Sometimes I see people typing this, uh, which, you know, that's not the instruction, but that's fine. As long as you have read this main block, that's what I require. So make submissions that represent my own work, now share my own work and solutions with anyone. And you see me um, type correcting typos, um, uh, uh, you know, it, this is all manually graded. Um, so whether you fix typos or not, doesn't matter. Um, uh, but uh, I like to correct my typos. That's why the resources during open book, timed assessment, and not engage in any other activities that dishonestly improve my results, dishonestly damage or improve the results of others. And obviously, as you have seen me do, um, someone typing this doesn't mean that they weren't multitasking <laughs> while they're doing it. You see me speak one thing while I'm typing the other thing. I'm multitasking. I'm a good multitasker. <laughs> Although you can see that my typo rates increase when I do that. Um, but you know, this is the most I could require of um, to in an attempt to ensure that someone's read through it. Because again, if I do it, set it up as a quiz. I, I don't know how. I don't think it's all that effective than someone simply typing out a simple block of text. Okay, and this is the mechanism that gives you enough points to move on while I uh, manually grade your response. So make sure you answer yes. If you answer no, then you have to go back and do it again because the thing won't let you progress. I mean, you know, um, yeah, it won't let you progress because unless you have minimum two, 1.9 out of five points, the next item will appear locked and you can basically can't do anything that'll allow you to advance to week one modules. So this is the introduction item. This is how we take attendance in this online lecture portion. Um, it also uh, lets me know how to uh, pronounce your name somewhat. <laughs> uh, we also have a name coach thing, but not everyone records uh, in response to that. So. Um, so let me do my own intro. Let me do a bit of a fuller intro of myself. So it'll be uh, doing two things with just one. Uh, I'll be clearing module requirements for test student and do my intro. So let me do that. And I'm going to be careful with how I scroll because any uh, personal information of yours that shows up, I'll need to basically blur it out um, when I um, edit the video for future posting because for pa, uh, the, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I can just reply. All right. Reply. Let me reply. Um, so my name, um, Hi, my name is Andrew Park. Uh, whenever you see test student in these graded discussions, it's me, your instructor, clearing the module requirements for the test student. It's been kind of um, unclear. Sometimes when I excuse this assignment from test student, it gets clear. Sometimes not. I don't know. But... Um, yeah, whenever you see test student posting, test student usually won't be actually engaging in the discussion. It's me just clearing module requirements. So uh, first the question, why you are taking this class? Uh, I am teaching this class uh, because I'm required to. 
Just kidding. <laughs> I actually don't have to teach you this class. Uh, I, I can have my full-time load mat without this class. But I love teaching this class. So let me just say that I am teaching this class uh, because this is my favorite class. If I could teach physics 4C and just the 4C every semester, I would. I can't, so I don't. <laughs> favorite class. Uh, uh, and... And the reason this is my favorite class can be summarized in two words. Modern physics. Uh, the modern physics, the topics of modern physics, that's why any physics major goes into a physics major and goes to graduate school, does research, attempts to finish PhD program. Um, and I, even though I didn't finish the program, I loved being in, uh, doing research. So, um, so uh, fit in my current role as community college instructor, the closest I get to that is in the context of this class. So that's why this is my favorite class. Uh, when I teach other classes, I don't mention that they are not, I don't explicitly tell them they're not my favorites, but this is my favorite class. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, that's the second question. Choose one or more of the following questions to answer. Um, so I think uh, I might have answered this previously, but let me answer it again anyway. Uh, so uh, I'll answer the last question. What topic and or question of modern physics most interest you? Um, when I was in graduate school, my area of research was atomic, molecular, and optical AMO physics. In AMO physics, uh, our main of trade is the laser, uh, whether it's the pulse, the and the yag laser, or the dye laser, or the frequency comb, or something else. The uh, lasers are used to probe energy levels of atoms and molecules and um, study different things we are interested in. Um, my research group, uh, the professor who was my advisor, I don't think he's at UC Berkeley anymore. He uh, moved to University of Mainz in Germany, I think, haven't really kept in touch. My research group um, uh, did a lot of work in uh, precision, measurement, in particular um, using magneto, atomic, magne, atomic magnetometry techniques that uh, my advisor uh, developed. Um, oh, and uh, my P, uh, uh, significant portion of my PhD project involved uh, uh, an uh, NEDM, neut Neutron Electric Dipole Moment uh, uh, project, uh, which has to do with the uh, attempt at detecting uh, parity, parity and time reversal Symmetry violating electric dipole moment of neutron, um, uh, which has potential to answer open questions in baryogenesis, modern physics research. <laughs> so with that, uh, let me post to that, and I'm going to be just careful to show uh, your personal information as little as possible. I'm going to have to blur all those out later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now that I've contributed as test to student, I can uh, proceed. I can click next and go to the next item and it won't say locked. It'll show up here. Welcome to week one and so on. Um, so, and you can see in the modules view that the links that used to be grayed out are no longer grayed out. So I've completed the getting started module. And when I did that, that actually unlocked two modules. 
it unlocked week one module that you just saw me in, and it actually also unlocked the lab module uh, for lab sessions weeks one and two. And oh, sorry, actually, it unlocked three modules because this is Physics 4C, not Physics 4A. <laughs> With the Physics 4C and Physics 4B, there's a, an extra module that's called the Mechanics Review. It's totally optional. Um, you, you can do it. You don't have to do it. You don't get any credit for doing it. Um, but I guess uh, what I would say is, uh, is this is made available as a tool for you. Some of you might have taken Physics 4A and 4B some time ago. So you might be wondering, how much of physics 4A and 4B do I have to know for this class? Because they are prerequisites. And this problem set is intended that uh, you can review some of the physics 4A and some physics 4B problems. So, um, so you know, it's zero points, doesn't count for anything. Uh, it's a set up to be due at the end of the semester, so you don't have to use any late passes for this. You can just access it any time. Um, and there's uh, how many questions? 20 questions here. So um, you can look through, oh no, sorry, 22 questions here. You can look through it. You can answer the ones uh, you want to try. You don't have to answer any of them. Uh, like questions like this, is, it's a good energy conservation question, like review your um, uh, understanding and memory of mechanics principles. Uh, some of the questions towards the end will be physics 4B, and I made sure to pick the ones that might be relevant for this class. So, um, so if there's time, I might do some of these questions. We'll see. So that's the third module that finishing the getting started module have unlocked for you. So, um, so yeah, uh, once you unlock week one, then just kind of, um, you know, work your way through. So if you are just working your way top to bottom, you know, read the page, follow instructions, click next read the page, uh, watch the videos, follow instructions, and click next. Now, I obviously didn't follow instructions because I'm seeing this instead. <laughs> so what you need to do is you need to, um, uh, you need to mark it as done. And there's uh, some instruction about what mark as done means in this class. But So I use this uh, uh, re additional requirement as a way to indicate to you that, oh, there's some physics content here. Please slow down, make sure, you, you know, if you're doing the clicking next to thing, like I was doing with my worst student, test student, just even the worst student has to slow down here and do one extra click and then <laughs> click next. But, you know, this uh, um, mark has done button, it's a toggle button. So you can do this, you know, if you feel like you have to mark something as done so that you can move on and see what other items are there, sure, you can do that. You unlock to this, you've seen it, you can kind of contribute to it when you're ready. And you can go back to this and you can unmark it. Uh, unlike the view item, which where if you've viewed something, you can't unview. But with the mark as done, you can use that to track for yourself what you have done, what you haven't done. So as you're going through module, if you feel like you have to mark it as done to kind of look what's ahead, sure, do that. I haven't done anything to block you from doing that. And then you can come back and, you know, use it to track what you have done, what you haven't done. You can totally do that. So for this discussion, um, you have the instructions, and I see some people have posted already. So me as test student, let me do this. I'm just going to clear the module requirements here. And what I'm going to do after the Monday due date is I'm going to review whose posts have been responded to and whichever haven't been responded to, I'll make sure that they have some response. So, and, um, and yeah, so, you know, so with the AI tools, I'm, uh, my views have developed. So I guess in the last one year ago, last spring semester, when ChatGPT was new, my perspective was it's hallucinating all the time. It's terrible. Don't use it. That was my view. <laughs> but I I'm beginning to see um, it perplexes especially is pretty good. So there are some contexts where I think you might be able to use it as a kind of a virtual tutor. I'll highlight some of those uses. Uh, all I ask is that whenever you use AI tools, that you use it ethically. That's all I ask. So here, let me just reply and just uh, just the clearing module requirement for test student. Let me do that. 
Oops, uh, I have to remember to pull our things out <laughs> later. Uh, yeah, all right, I'll pull our things out that I need to. So now that test the student has contributed, he can move on to the, oh, and the, here, um, yeah, let me re-record this. So I'll remember to do that. Uh, I'll have to do it next week, I think, or maybe I can do this. Uh, I'm not quite ready to do it uh, today. Uh, yeah, I'll do it at the like as one of the first items at the next uh, week's first virtual class session, because um, there have been many changes since these were recorded. So, um, and I did record something for physics 4A, but um, I want to have something that's a specific with your conceptual question like this. So you know, you got five questions of those which you have to answer three. Um, uh, so this is the Canvas native assignment, you know, star assignment. Um, I recommend the text entry, uh, just the clearing module requirement. Uh, you know, when you do it, don't do it. This will get zero out of six. <laughs> um, and with this, actually, I don't have to do submit anything for test the student. I can act, excuse it. So when you do peer review, you should see, yeah, something pop up here. After the, um, so it's due on Friday midnight, and then the the morning of the next day, the Saturday morning at 8 a.m., you are going to get peer reviews assigned from other people who also made the on-time submissions. And for that purpose, on-time means before the peer reviews get assigned. Uh, for this very first assignment, I'll continue to assign peer review so that everyone gets at least one chance to do peer review. Um, after that, in order to participate in peer review, you need to have made an on-time submission. And um, peer reviews can be a little bit complicated in terms of like steps you have to go through. So I am going to be posting an extra credit discussion that you may have seen when I was early on the discussion page. I'm going, going to publish that this Saturday and ask people to contribute to it, to share with your classmates how you are accessing those um, peer review assignments. So with that, I'm gonna move on to the next, and yeah, no John problems. So, so what's coming up next? That's the uh, really the big portion of this class. As I say, somewhere up here, if I could get rid of anything but one, this is the one I would keep the problem set. Because whatever I might have done wrong, missed, if you can solve physics problems, you can have reassurance that you are ready for your upper division work. So, um, so. You will see a couple of things that's going to help you do problem sets. So this is just a video showing you how to use textbook references to use the homework help that's on the next page. Let me go to the next page. And um, when you get to this page, I, my re first recommendation is skip it. Don't bother watching all the videos because it's going to take a lot of time and you don't really need to. What you should do instead is you should um, go to the problem set and start working through it. If you find you are stuck, then come back here. The problem you are stuck on, I probably did it because I think I made sure to do all the difficult questions. So watch the video. Hopefully that helps you do how to do that question and then, you know, and then do it. Um, so that's the help that's available. And, you know, after watching the video, somehow if you are still not sure, you are still stuck, then, um, then reach out to me. Uh, I love answering follow-up questions. Um, and I either I can um, kind of expand on something that the video was unclear on, or uh, sometimes video flat out has a mistake or it's so confusing that there's no salvaging it, then I would love to re-record it. I've done it with some of the videos. Whenever you see version two or take two, that's uh, videos I've done more than once. Uh, I don't think I have had a version three quite yet. Um, so I mean, the, uh, do I want to do problem set? Um, Instead of doing the problem set, let me do this. Um, let me go to the, so, you know, I can do rest of this, which um, I don't want to, I, I, I can't, I'm pretty sure I can't get score of 12 in the remaining time. So let me do this. Um, and lab modules, you can view for yourself. So let me not go through that. Let me do this. Um, we have this mechanical mechanics review um, uh, note and the page. And I've done some of the questions, um, these. So I don't think I've done any of the physics of 4B questions. So let me do this. Let me pick one of the physics of 4B questions and do that. Um, so, you know, some physics 4B questions. 
So again, there's 22 questions. I don't know if I go to question 15, I think that's a still physics 4A. This is waves and standing waves. Um, still 4A. Uh, oh, I think it's this is 4B starting here. Um, this is calorimetry, I think, of a kind. Um, I don't really want to do it. So now uh, it does have it links to the hints, and one of the advantage of us using a zero textbook cost or OER open educational resource is that you can actually access this now. You don't have to buy it. This was our Physics 4B textbook, and even if you didn't take it with us, hey, you have access to the textbook. You don't have to buy any access. Um, I don't want to do this question. Let me see. Do I want to do this question? Yeah, let me do this question. So mainly because I sense that it's easy and I can do it in a few minutes. <laughs> so it's an, this is an example of a question that you can do. And, you know, I say it's easy and I can probably do it. Let's see if I can do it. See if I remember it enough. Um, you know, I, so, you know, with the physics of 4A, you can wake me up in the middle of the night and I can just do it fine. I, you know, I can do it in my sleep, literally. Uh, with the physics of 4B and 4C, sometimes if I don't like a review, prepare myself, sometimes I'll have forgotten things, but let's see. So consider a small black body is over it. Okay, yes, that spherical black body. What's the hint? Uh, review the section, discretion radiation, and the uh, Stefan Boltzmann law of radiation. I think I remember Stefan Boltzmann law. And that's the main thing I was trying to make sure that I remember. Um, it's the one that says it relates to the intent, or I guess the total, you can state it this way. Total power emitted by a black body is the area times the intensity. And the intensity is given, it's a, the key part of that is it's a, proportional to the temperature to the fourth power. It's quite unusual to have such a high polynomial power of dependence. And there's some constant there that turns that uh, Kelvin to the fourth power into the correct unit for area, uh, sorry, intensity. So that's the Stefan Boltzmann law. And when this black body is at room temperature, what is the total power emitted? Yeah. So I can do this calculation in Wolfram Alpha. And the main reason I would do this in Wolfram Alpha, or two reasons, is one, it'll look up constants for me. I don't have to uh, look up Stefan Boltzmann constant. I can just type out Stefan Boltzmann constant, and it'll just uh, look up the constant and use it for me in the calculation. So I can say that times the temperature, 293 Kelvin to the fourth power, and I need the area. So I need the area of the sphere. Uh, I have the radius. Um, so area of the sphere is uh, four times pi times the radius, five centimeter to the second power. <laughs> um, so, and the second reason to use Wolfram Alpha is it'll do all the unit conversions for me. I can just leave this in terms of centimeters. It'll do the unit conversion to do the calculation in a way unit consistent, unit aware way. And um, and the third reason is it'll tell me how it interpreted my input so I can see, oh, did it misunderstand me? No, it didn't, looks fine. 13.13 uh, watt or 13.13 watt, it's hopefully correct. Suppose it's a, headed to a very high temperature, okay. Oh, and this is the fourth reason to use Wolfram Alpha. If you have to do the same calculation more than once, then you just have to change a number. You don't have to redo the whole thing. So this is increased by something like factor of three. So three to the fourth power, that's quite big, 81. So we're gonna get something in the range of um, 1,000, maybe a 1,000 watt. Let's do the calculation and see. I can't do the exact calculation of that kind in my head. Yeah, I said 1,000, apparently 2,000, and uh, I said it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, use calculators. Don't try to do everything by mental uh, math. So, yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, and there's also wind's displacement law. Uh, you know, this question has nothing to do with it. So that's, uh, um, so I guess, uh, um, yeah, so for those of you who, for whom it might have been a while since you took physics 4A, 4B, this is one thing that will um, help you. Um, help, help you um, kind of review uh, 
but have you missed out on or what would you need to review? With the physics of 4B questions, I try to pull out only the topics that are relevant to this class. So black body radiation, that it relates to uh, quantum mechanics. And uh, there are questions that deal with uh, electromagnetism because we use uh, concepts from those in, as an example when we do both quantum mechanics and special relativity. So, um, so you know, spend some time working through it, but not too much time. Again, this is optional, extra. You don't get any credit for it. It's really available to you as a tool to make sure that you can check your own preparedness of um, of um, uh, this class, <laughs> this last uh, lower division physics class that you will take before your upper division work. So I think uh, that's uh, everything we have time for. Um, if there aren't any questions, comments from our real-time participants, let me uh, say goodbye to the people joining by recorded video, by which I mean I'm going to stop my recording, and I'll stay online briefly in case our real-time people have any questions. So saying goodbye to people joining by recorded video. See you tomorrow in our Wednesday lab session. Please be sure to be there, and if you can't, please let me know why. So bye. Recording stopped. Okay, let me stop my backup recording.